Hi there, welcome to Rain Coast Diesel. Today I'm having a look at some injector pop testing from a Kubota diesel engine. It's a D722 that came out of my Bobcat uh, mini track loader. And uh, it was running a little smoky, so I wanted to check if the injectors were uh, okay. And uh, so let's take a look. I got one of these Vivor uh, pop testers, and I gotta say I'm really happy with it for the price. Um, they're pretty cheap and it's about three times the size that I expected and so far so good. I, I have no complaints. I'm happy with it. But what we're going to do is pressurize one of these injectors here. It's, it's one of the OEM ones. And uh, first we're going to check what pressure that it pops at. And so it's around 1900 that it's popping at. And uh, the spec is in bar, but it works out to be around... 2000 to 2100 psi that they're looking for so i'm at 1900 so close but a little low so we'll look at that after um, the other thing is the the spray pattern is good here uh, it's a pintle type injector so it's supposed to just be a single straight spray um, for which is common for indirect injection diesels like this and then the other thing is we just want to make sure that we get that chirping noise. So that's that looks good. And then the last part of the test is to just make sure that we don't have any leak down. So if I just tighten that off, you want the pressure basically not to drop after 5 or 10 seconds. And, and that's good. So no leaks in the injector. It's popping nicely. Good spray pattern. Uh, I just want to take a look at the preload on the spring in there. Um, I'm going to see if I can bump that up and get it to pop more like 2000 to 2100 PSI. So to adjust the pop pressure on this injector, what we're going to do is open it up and there's a spring in there and uh, with a shim that comes stock and uh, we're just going to increase the shim the preload on that with uh, small shims as needed to, to hit the pressure that we need. Um, it's very thin material, makes a big difference. So just a tiny bit of shim stock under there is what we'll do. Um, so I'm gonna start by taking this apart. Okay, so I got the injector cracked loose, the body here, which can be a little difficult the first time. So we'll open it up. And we got this preload spring in here and there's a little shim in here that uh, kind of gets stuck in there. It doesn't want to come out. And then there's a few other components here, which we don't need to do anything with. We just need to get them put back how they came out and uh, yeah so this little steel shim in here it kind of gets stuck uh, stuck in the bottom just because of surface tension of the fuel so uh, I was just using some welding wire to, to try and kind of poke at it and get it to come out there we go so here's the shim that comes stock and so the way that you increase the preload these springs are very stiff uh, the manual says that to increase the pressure, I think about 35 PSI, you need a shim that is 0 0.4 thou or four tenths of one thousandth of an inch. So very, very thin. I mean, that's that's thinner than tinfoil. Um, I need to go up about, oh, I was popping at 1900 roughly. And uh, I'm looking for more like 2000 to 2100. So um, I'm going to put in shim stock that I have that is what I had was brass. I guess I'd rather if it was steel, but I think brass is going to be fine. Um, it's a tractor engine after all. So I'm, I'm going to just be, do that and be happy with it. But what I did was just cut out a little circle there that matched um, just with some just with some cheap scissors, you want to make sure they're not serrated because um, it'll mark up the edge. And uh, I just traced it out and cut my little disc and just going to lap that over 
and reassemble it. So that goes on top of that guy back on the spring. Get that put together. So with the shim and then I'll put the the rest of these components just back how they were. Okay, so we'll get this tightened up and the manual does call for 25 foot pounds on this body. It says it's important uh, if you get, the tolerances are just so tight that too much can uh, throw off your pressures. This is 19 millimeter here, but uh, this larger body is some odd metric size that got no sockets and no wrenches the right size. So I'm forced to use a adjustable spanner, which isn't my favorite, but it's going to work. And there we go. That's 25. So we'll throw this back on the pop tester and see if it's come up at all from 1900. Okay. Back on the pop tester now with our uh, 2000 shim. Uh, preloading the spring in this injector nozzle and uh, so previously we were popping at 1900 and now we're popping right at, at about 2000 and injector seems to be functioning perfectly so it didn't quite move the needle as much as the manual said but again the tolerances are just so tight just reassembly could shift things a bit so I'm happy with 2000 and I'm going to stick with that I tested the other two injectors uh, from this engine and they were also both at 1900 and I put shims in them as well. So we're all at about 2000 to 2100 now on spec. Um, all three injectors had good spray pattern and no leaks. So I know the injectors weren't anything wrong with this engine, which is good news. Um, I, I actually am doing this while I had the cylinder head off because I had a head gasket issue. So this was a convenient time to test it. and I. The engine ran a little smokier than I was expecting. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to check out the injectors. Um, turns out that I have had a bent push rod on an intake valve. So I think that may have been the cause for the smokiness uh, now that I know the injectors are good. Um, the, that intake valve was probably not opening all the way and could have been starving that cylinder for air, thus the uh, bit of smoke. So. I think that's probably what it is and I can get that fixed up and get the cylinder head back on and uh, these injectors I know are good to go which is nice because they're the OEM ones and I'd rather not have to replace them with um, cheap aftermarket ones. So that's how I went about testing my Kubota diesel injectors and setting the uh, correct pop pressure with shims and this procedure surely would work for lots of different Kubota engines as well as other manufacturers it's all the same technology. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching.